So once we've done the inspection and observation, we move into palpation. So basically, you're just going to examine the musculature in the cervical area and related structures. A note to make here is that there isn't a lot of inter-examiner reliability on studies that have been performed. It's really common, even between practitioners in the same clinical setting, to think in their mind's eye that they're on a certain structure and yet be an inch or two apart. So taking that into account, palpation is not an absolute, but it helps establish a rapport with the patient. They get used to your touch. You're able to assess whether they can relax or not because you do need them to relax so that you can actually get in on those soft structures. So we've got Lindsay here. Um, just gonna stabilize your head. Just using you know the pads of your fingers, we would tend to get in and examine the muscles in the posterior cervical column here, paraspinals. We'd get up into the suboccipital region. We could follow around the front, have you turn a little bit this way, you know, kind of pinching the sternocleidomastoid, the SCM here to get an, a feel for how tense it may be. Uh, go back to neutral here. And then visualizing all the structures that come down. We've got the trapezius muscles that tie in into the cervical and suboccipital region that actually go down all the way to the bra line here. We can get into the rhomboids and even the levator scapulae, which come off of the angle of the scapula here and follow it all the way up into where it inserts into the cervical spine. So take your time, assess the patient, get a feel for when they're relaxed and really sink in and feel and discern between muscle tendon and bony structures and it'll just really establish that sense of communication with the patient because the treatment is physical and hands-on and this is the first step in getting them to understand you'll be using your hands and get comfortable to your sense of touch.